I was in the partial department the other day and I noticed a case a doctor had sent in that I thought was kind of interesting. It's a Kennedy class one situation where we are edentulous uh, bilaterally here and behind our remaining teeth. And uh, it presents some challenges because we've got some tori that you can see down here, at least three of them, kind of odd, with one here and then two over on that side. And then we're going to have some issues with clasp retention too, especially on this tooth. Eesh, you can see that. And uh, you know, it's one of those cases where um, we've got some good rest preps, which is nice. We've got a, a nice little stop uh, over here on the lingual the cuspid and then a nice occlusal rest uh, on the distal of the bi, but we want to avoid the tori, of course, so the patient's not going to be back in the office uh, in pain complaining. We want to clasp in a way where we're not going to um, destroy the abutment teeth, rock them out, or the tissue around there. And the, the dentist had requested a, um, a DE hinge, a distal extension hinge, and with that hinge, we're able to um, clasp uh, a circumferential clasp uh, around the cuspid. Uh, so if you haven't seen a distal extension hinge yet, this is what uh, the framework actually looks like. And that is the hinge. You can see it on both sides. And the hinge simply, as you can see, provides a stress breaker between the saddles um, and the major connector. And so. Typically in a situation like this, in a Kennedy class one with bilateral edentulous areas, um, when the patient chews down without a stress breaker, uh, we've got rotation on the abutment teeth and that tends to force them in a distal uh, direction. And so on a tooth and tissue borne partial like this, um, if it's a rigid unit, uh, the teeth are gonna take uh, the majority of the brunt of the stress. But when we have something like this, where there's a DE hinge, now all of a sudden we're transferring uh, a lot of the uh, stress that's generated during function while the patient's chewing down here. Because of the stress breaker of the hinge, it's being transmitted to the edentulous ridge and sparing uh, the anterior teeth, especially the ones that are clasped. It's sparing them um, that stress and, and pushing them distally uh, and doing damage to, by making them more mobile. And so the, the edentulous ridge takes up more of that stress. Of course, we're going to see faster resorption of the ridge because now when the patient chews down because of the hinge, uh, the saddle is going to be able to be pushed down even harder. And so we're going to see quicker resorption of this. And as a result, um, we're going to see that uh, it starts to fit maybe a little bit loose as it resorbs underneath that saddle. The saddle will continue to go down. Uh, with the ridge, but then it'll also come back up again with sticky foods. And so one of the disadvantages is that kind of feeling of maybe looseness, if you will, as the ridge resorbs underneath it. But of course, it, it can be you know relined uh, as well to that new tissue height. Over on this side, you know we really can't get below um, the infra bulge, and so that's another good reason to put this hinge because otherwise, when the patient bites down on here, it's just going to pop, have a tendency to want to pop that clasp. Um, off of the tooth or at least raise it up on the tooth and we will lose retention for that reason. So uh, again, as the patient loads this with a DE hinge, that stress breaker is going to take stress off of those abutment teeth and put it onto the ridge. So it, it kind of depends, you know, what kind of condition the abutment teeth are in and how strong they are and what the ridge looks like underneath it. And certainly if you, you know, write in and send the case into the lab, uh, our technicians can help you decide whether or not you want to go with something like this. But you can see how with the patient chewing in the, on this all of a sudden, we're not going to have the same kind of torquing of those abutment teeth that we would when this is designed uh, as a rigid unit. So certainly something to consider in a case like this where we have bilateral uh, edentulous spaces. And of course, we're able to stay above the uh, tori as well, stay clear away from the tori so that we don't cause any pain. And there was another case sitting um, right next to it. And uh, again, the same kind of thing. We've got uh, tori on, on both sides. Uh, we do have some rest preps that were provided uh, by the doctor, which is really nice. So again, kind of like on the last one, we're going to do another uh, lingual plate to avoid the tori. But here we have just a unilateral edentulous space on this one. So, you know, the concern is that as the patient loads uh, the denture on this side on uh, 18 and 19, um, the right side is going to rock and dislodge because, you know, we're putting all the force on the partial here, this unilateral force. It's only coming from one side. And so this is another time 
where a distal extension hinge is going to keep the partial from unseating when the patient bites down um, onto this. It'll reduce the issue, uh, and so as the patient loads the denture teeth, the saddle will give uh, into the ridge and not torque the abutment uh, or the partial denture. So um, again, this is a, a good use of a DE hinge when you have a patient like this so that we're not popping this off, rotating around this axis down the middle with the patient biting just on this one side. Again, it allows that stress breaking, so uh, we've got the saddle, we've given the saddle the ability to move up and down without torquing um, the rest of the partial denture. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that we do have to consider the occlusal clearance here. You know, we need room to put uh, a denture tooth over the hinge still. So the lab typically is going to need uh, five millimeters uh, from the gingiva where the hinge is going to be, five millimeters from here up to uh, the opposing. And as long as that five millimeter exists, uh, there is room for the DE hinge and the denture tooth. Um, you'll notice both of these are mandibular cases and the, the technicians here really don't like to do uh, DE hinges like this on maxillary partial dentures. You know, the hinge has a tendency uh, to loosen and the saddle has a tendency to drop, whether it's from gravity, just kind of over time uh, away from the ridge. Uh, or, and so it's one of the reasons why this is a real popular choice on mandibular partial dentures, but you're not going to see a lot on maxillary dentures because it just doesn't have the same efficacy and the same comfort for the patient. But when you've got, whether it's a bilateral edentulous space or a unilateral edentulous space like this, and you're concerned about the longevity of the abutment teeth, certainly it's a good thing to bring up to the technician the possibility of placing a distal extension hinge, a DE hinge, to act as a stress breaker and take some of the pressure off these abutment teeth and put it on to the edentulous ridge.